Nearly two decades after they were first discovered, the Curiosity rover has begun to explore web-like features known as boxwork structures. Answers to how they formed and why they're bigger than any on Earth are now emerging. On this episode of Mars Guy, the more than three mile high mound of rocks, informally named Mount Sharp in Gale Crater, hosts a variety of features that provide scientifically compelling exploration targets, which was used to pitch it as a good landing site as far back as 2008. Curiosity landed at the base of Mount Sharp in August of 2012 and has been slowly making its way up. Two weeks ago, it arrived at the edge of terrain that looks like it's covered in spider webs, which stretch across the landscape for at least 13 kilometers along a common elevation. Let's call it a web of intrigue. You can find similar features on Earth where they're known as boxwork structures, but they're tiny compared to the ones on Mars. Still, the Mars versions have been interpreted to form in the same way. I've encountered lots of boxwork structures in Chile, including in a place conveniently known as Valle de Marte, Valley of Mars. Here, they're made of gypsum, a common sulfate mineral that forms as sulfate-bearing water, percolates through fractures in the host rock, and then evaporates. These crisscrossing veins of gypsum are more resistant to erosion than the host rock, so as the rock is eroded, the boxwork structures stand out. I had a hard time imagining how this process could scale up to the size of the boxwork structures on Mars. The amount of water and the number of cycles of evaporation that would be needed to fill such large fractures seemed unlikely. But now views from Curiosity help clarify the story. This is a spectacular mosaic of mass cam images put together by Neville Thompson, and here's Mars Guy for scale. The boxwork structures are low ridges that look a bit like the eroded foundations of an ancient village. And no, I'm not suggesting they were formed by ancient Martians or Ziggy and his spiders. It's close up views of the ridges that lead to a more likely explanation. Directly in front of the rover's wheel is a rock that looks strikingly similar to gypsum boxwork structures in Chile. The ridges appear to be shot through with veins rather than being composed of solid gypsum or any other single mineral. Basically, the ridges are composed of earth-like boxwork veins. Gypsum is the likely mineral that fills the veins. Here's another view that shows a bright white vein, which is consistent with gypsum. But how do the small-scale boxwork structures lead to the large-scale ones visible from orbit? Large-scale fractures must have formed first, leading to more permeable pathways for any water that came in later. Sulfate-bearing water moving through the large fractures would percolate into small-scale fractures and, upon evaporation, accumulate gypsum or maybe other sulfates. The small-scale boxwork veins effectively armor the host rock, ultimately leading to the large-scale boxwork ridges that we see today. An absence of small-scale boxwork veins in the rocks between the ridges would support this scenario. Regardless of the details of their origin, the presence of what we now know to be small-scale boxwork veins within the larger ridges means that the giant spider webs are evidence for a watery history in Gale Crater similar to that experienced by the Valley of Mars on Earth. <laughs>